What do all top Madden players have in common? They generate pressure. That's the name of the game when you run 4-3 even 6-1 out of any of these playbooks and there's no formation in Madden 22 that does a better job of getting your players to absolutely fly off the edge. When you run an elite blitz, it forces your opponents to make split second decisions which often results in them taking sacks or throwing the ball right to your defenders. But there's so much complexity that goes into each play and that's why I wanted to share with you guys the four key insights that I learned the hard way to help you run the most overpowered defense in Madden 22. And to prove just how powerful this defense is, I set a goal for myself to go undefeated and win a Super Bowl in the Legends division where only the top 0.1% of players are ranked. And if I could achieve that, then I could officially call myself the best defensive player in Madden 22. But before I could do that, I had to actually learn the defense. So I hopped into a game to get comfortable with 4-3 even 6-1 and immediately I ran into my first major problem. It turns out that this formation only has four defensive backs and as I looked at all the valuable AP I had tied up on safeties and cornerbacks who I literally couldn't put on the field, it brought me to key insight number one, which is to make your personnel fit your scheme. It quickly dawned on me that speed at these two outside linebacker positions was the single most important factor for this blitz to be effective and to confirm this, I hopped into a regs game with the Seahawks, who have two super fast outside linebackers, and as expected, the blitz was flying in there and giving my opponent all sorts of problems. But as I watched other top Madden players run this scheme, I noticed their edge rushers were lighting up like a Christmas tree. I realized that speed was only half of the equation, and that key insight number one really is to make your personnel and abilities fit your scheme, and understanding these abilities is critical, whether you play MUT, regs, or CFMs. The first ability that takes the scheme to another level is under pressure and basically if your defender gets within a certain radius of the quarterback as he's throwing under pressure will light up and make it extremely likely that the pass will be nope. inaccurate now the second ability you can use is edge threat elite and this is like a juiced up version of under pressure because not only is under pressure built into it but it also includes the edge threat ability which provides dominant pass rush moves from the edge and the third ability i strongly recommend using is lurker on your middle linebacker lurker provides spectacular catch Catch animations for lurking defenders, and while safeties and cornerbacks naturally get up for interceptions, the lurker ability is crucial for getting your linebackers to jump way higher and get the best interception animations possible. So with the right personnel and abilities on the field, it was time to master the blitz setup. From watching other players run it, I learned that there are a minimum of seven pre-snap adjustments required to make this blitz come in as fast as possible. Seven adjustments is a lot to do in a couple seconds, and that led me to key insight number two which is to build up your muscle memory. With so many adjustments in such a short time frame, you need to know these adjustments like the back of your hand so that you can breeze through them in an actual game. For this example of the blitz setup, I'm going to be using Tampa 2, although the blitz works with any play in the formation. Adjustment number one is to base align by pressing Y or triangle and then right on the left stick. If you don't base align, then against certain formations, your linebackers will line up too far outside for the blitz to be effective, so it's essential that you always base line before doing anything else. Adjustment number two is to show blitz by pressing Y or triangle and then left on the left stick. This presses our cornerbacks and brings our safeties up and we want our defenders in close so we can clean up all those easy interceptions. Adjustment number three is to blitz all linebackers by pressing right on the d-pad and then down on the right stick. This puts your outside linebackers and user in blitz assignments which is how we're going to create insane pressure on every play. Adjustment number four is to slant the d-line outside side by pressing left on the d-pad and up on the right stick. This ensures that our defensive ends engage the offensive tackles, allowing the outside linebackers to come free off the edge. Adjustment number five is to QB contain by double tapping RB or R1, and this is the one adjustment that is optional. There can be huge benefits to QB containing because it protects against QB nope. rollouts, and on next gen, the contain rushers will fly right by a blocking running back. The downside, however, is that the pass rush component of edge threat elite won't act if the defender is on a QB contain. The blitz is highly effective either way, so deciding whether you should QB contain really just comes down to your individual ability setup in the game situation. Adjustment number six is to pass commit by pressing RB or R1 and then up on the right stick. This helps your pass rush come in a little bit faster and helps your coverage play a little tighter because you're telling your defenders to focus 100% on guarding the pass. And finally, adjustment number seven is to hover with your user just above the center and in just a second, 
second, we'll go into more detail about why this is so important. To recap, in the precious few seconds you have before the ball is snapped, you have to base the line, show blitz, blitz all linebackers, slant the D-line outside, QB contain, pass commit, and hover with your user. Practice mode is the best place to master these adjustments, but if you're comfortable with all of that, now we can start breaking down what happens after the ball is snapped. As exciting as it was to watch my outside linebackers get the most insane pressure I'd ever seen, I still found myself giving up more yards than I wanted, and I knew there was still way more to learn. That led me to key insight number three, which is turn your user into Superman. Now, the average user will just kind of run around in circles in the middle of the field, and that's not going to get you the stops that you want. But if you can implement these three specific usering techniques, your defense will go from okay to legendary. The first technique is for our user to engage the center, and you have to do this in order for our blitz to be as effective as possible. We're basically distracting the center by making him think that we're blitzing, so that even if our opponent blocks six players, we still get an edge rusher to come in completely untouched by removing the center from the equation. The second usering technique that lots of people struggle with is to guard the running back. When you're sending crazy heat, your opponent will be looking to take their easy checkdowns, and there's no easier checkdown in the game than hitting the running back on a flat or wheel route. Once you take that easy checkdown away, most players will freeze in the pocket, and your blitz will be in there before they can even blink. The third technique to help you force those valuable turnovers is to press wire triangle right after your opponent throws the ball. This might sound really obvious at first, but getting in the habit of pressing wire triangle anytime the ball could be remotely close can end up triggering some wild interception animations and truly turn your user into Superman. So finally, with my personnel and abilities in order, the pre-snap adjustments built into my muscle memory and my user flying all over the field making unbelievable plays, I felt ready to go for my undefeated Super Bowl run. The first game went incredible. The blitz was screaming in there and the edge that elites were forcing missed throws left and nope. right. The second game went even better with my opponent throwing in the towel without even picking up a first down. And after a bit of a close call in game three and then another blowout in game four, it was game five where I learned the most valuable lesson of all and my final key insight. After my heavy blitzing had completely failed to stop my opponent all game, my undefeated Super Bowl run was in serious jeopardy. Late in the game, faced with a critical third and six, I went with a setup I had never ran before. I called Sam Will Blitz and put the full blitz setup on, shaded inside, and then for the first time ever, put my defensive ends on curl flats, hoping my opponent wouldn't see it coming. I won the game, and more importantly, I learned key insight number four, which is adapt. If all you do is send crazy heat on every play, then skilled Madden players will adjust and they will find open receivers. But if you learn to incorporate those extra adjustments, like shading up or down to change your zones or dropping your defensive ends into coverage, then you absolutely can run this defense at a truly elite level. With the four key insights all working in unison, I motored through the rest of the regular season, got some early disconnect and concede wins in the playoffs and found myself in the Super Bowl. It was a brutal battle, but I got the crucial stops when I needed to, and as I eventually kicked my Super Bowl winning field goal and had some questionable celebratory moves, I couldn't help but sit back in astonishment at just how much this defense had transformed my game. So that's how I became the best defensive player in Madden, and if you want to take your offense to the next level, then definitely check out this video on how Throne runs the most unstoppable offense in Madden 22.